Hi, and thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope this is useful to you. So it's been another really crazy busy week for me this week. So we had a DCs meeting last night with all of the district commissioners and the chairs of each district as well, which I thought went really well. And I'm really thankful for them to turning out and helping us shape what we're doing to help you with restarting scouting. Uh, this week I took part in a Cheltenham district executive. I've had a number of one-to-ones and also we got to have a GSLs and a district team meeting in Cotswold district as well. It was fantastic to spend time with all of those different groups of people. And I'm really thankful for them all to give up that extra time to support scouting in the way that they do. As I said with the DCs meeting, most of the topic we've been talking about this week is how we start restarting scouting. And we'll talk to you a little bit more about that shortly. So last weekend was the great indoors weekender. Did you take part? I did. I had a lot of fun. So I decided to camp outdoors in the end. I know last week I said I would build an indoor den. But last week I put my tent up and we had lots of fun in the garden. So I made whirly birds. We made a rocket. And you might have seen that on our Gloucestershire Facebook page. We also got to uh, make s'mores and we cooked out on the fire. It was a fantastic weekend. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too for all of those that took part. So here was my certificate that I printed out. So you can still print your certificate out from the website. And also a big thank you too to 45th Cheltenham, to 1st Upton St. Leonard's, 1st Royal Forest and Deer Park Kemble for all sharing their journey with me last weekend as well. It looked like they had a fantastic weekend as well. A number of the groups around the county had set up group camps alongside the Great Indoors Weekender camp. So it was fantastic to see all that they were doing across social media. I know they're having lots of fun because they sent me lots of pictures. So here's a bit of a summary of what happened. talking a lot about restarting scouting at the moment and one great piece of news for this week is that Cranham Scout Centre is reopening. They are now available for you to be able to go and use their outdoor space to ha have your activities and do your face-to-face -face scouting if you want to. Sadly we still can't do nights away but you are able to book Cranham to do some of those outdoor activities especially useful if you don't have space at home at your own headquarters. Do get in contact with them. They're willing to work with any group and any section to try and work out how they best meet each other's needs. They're very compliant with safety. They've got all of the great things going on to make sure that we are healthy and safety as well. So a big thank you to the team at Cranham and do go and make use of that space if you possibly can. It's a great resource to have within the county. Also, we've been learning a lot as we go through the process of restarting scouting. A number of groups have been able to start thinking about their risk assessment, and everything else that they need to do to be able to come back to face-to-face -face scouting. It was fantastic to see Mayor ESU in Cockwell Vale 
have actually started the process and they've been approved and they met for the first time this week. It was fantastic to see the photos of them eventually getting out to the open again. It was brilliant to see. As part of the journey we've been learning about, there's some things that we've identified that just some top tips really for you to help you with getting approvals if you want to, to go back to face-to-face -face scouting. Of course, there's no rush. We can take our time at this. There's no expectation to get back to scouting right now face-to-face, -face. but there's some things we've learned. Some of the things we've learned this week are that the risk assessment isn't just about doing the activity risk assessment. I really want to encourage every one of you to go and read the guidelines that are at this scout website and go make sure you really understand what's expected of all of us to be able to approve scouting to start face to face again. As I said, those risk assessments are not just about the activities. You've got to demonstrate in those risk assessments that you've covered all of the COVID code. Also, we'll be asking you to demonstrate you've thought about people, places and your programme. So there's lots to consider. So please do go and read the guidance. And you've got access to the checklist to be able to help you. And you can also see the approvers checklist. So do make sure you're looking at that before you're thinking about starting face-to-face -face scouting. Another thing we've learned this week is, I don't think everybody recognises you cannot start face-to-face -face scouting unless all of your mandatory training is in place. Safety and safeguarding have to be complete in order face-to-face -face scouting to start for your section or for your group or for your explorer unit. Please don't be that person in your group that cannot allow scouting to start because your mandatory training is not up to date. It's really important that we all get on top of that. Also, it's important to make sure that we've all got our DBSs. We can now do DBS applications again, so please do check with your line manager, especially if your DBS has expired in recent months. Do check and make sure we get that up to speed as quickly as we can. And the final top tip we've got is don't forget to talk to parents and carers, young people about the expectations, especially those that are shielding. What about those that can't take part in the face-to-face -face activities? We don't want any young person to miss out on the opportunity to do scouting, so do talk to them about what they can do instead if they're not able to meet with you face to face. To support you with all of this, we've been adding lots more information to our website. What's the website, Izzy? gscouts.org.uk forward slash coronavirus. So this week's blog from Carol is all about sleeping. If you've got a couple of minutes, why not go and take a look? You'll find it on our homepage in the news section, halfway down the page, at gscouts.org.uk. And it's on the topic of sleeping, and it's a really interesting read. Do go and take a look if you can. I want to talk to you really briefly about training. I say a huge thank you to you, especially if you've completed your safety or your safeguarding training in the last few weeks. I really am appreciative. I know that many of you have been working hard to get this done to make sure that we are staying as safe as possible as we possibly can. We've made great progress as a county. If you're a group executive member or a district executive committee member, I'm talking to you now. You might have missed it, but last year, updates to POR, policy organisation and our rules, included that executive members also have to complete safety training and safeguarding training. So if you've missed that and you haven't recognised that you need to do yours, can I ask you to just take a, um, some time to complete your safety training and your safeguarding training? And the other one I really want to encourage you to have a look at is module one for executives. Almost half of all of the executive committee members we've got across the county have still to complete this really important piece of learning. It's important because it tells you about the understanding of the role that you have as a trustee in scouting. There's some really important information to us that we should all know as executive members. Please do take some time if you possibly can to go and complete that module one executive. And then following a short conversation with your TA, it won't take a lot. And actually, in many cases, some of you won't need to do the learning at all. Just pick up the phone to your TA and arrange to have a conversation about it. If you don't know about your TA, speak to your group scout leader or your district commissioner or your local training manager, and they'll arrange to make sure that you've got somebody who can have a conversation with you validate that. I'd really love in a couple of weeks time for us not to be talking about almost half of us being outstanding on that and to be a lot closer to us all having completed it. If you're able to commit some time to that I'd really appreciate it and that's my one big ask of you as executive committee members this week. And finally the last thing I want to say to you is say a massive thank you for everybody that sent me Neckers over the past few months. I haven't got one this week, but it's a chance for me to say a huge thank you if you have sent me your Necker. I promise I will return them as soon as I possibly can. 
in terms of these videos going forward, I think I'm going to start doing them every couple of weeks. Unless I get a barrage of emails, I know, please do them weekly. There's less to update you on now, and as things are starting to return, and particularly during the summer months, we won't need to do quite so much communication with you. So I'm going to start doing these every two weeks from here on in. Um, if by means you need more information, please talk to your district commissioner or others around you, and we'll see if we can't get that information to you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for everything you continue to do in scouting, whether you think it's with young people, whether it's behind the scenes. You're all so important. Thank you so much for keeping everything going. I really do appreciate it. I'll speak to you all again soon. Please remember to stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.